Okay. Ready when you are. Here you go. Thank you. Hi. Anything come for me? Yes, we're just going to bring it through. No packages or anything? Nothing so far. You expecting something? Of course we will. We do actually have some experience of people in custody, you know. We'll make sure he gets back safe and sound, don't worry. And you? Prison service seem convinced they're the only people in the country capable of looking after a prisoner. Hmm. This is John Cotham, criminal royalty, a household name around here in the 80s. The old school arm robber. Never said a word in court, 20 years later, still insists he was innocent. They don't make him like that anymore. That just makes him stupid in my book. If he'd admitted it, shown remorse, he'd be out by now. And you and me and everyone else in the country wouldn't be paying his bed and board. It's not exactly Robin Hood, you know. What? You mean you don't buy the miscarriage of justice stuff? Oh, he's got witnesses, motives, even left his jacket on the scene. He's a typical criminal intellectual. That's just the one they did him for. He's a one-man crime wave. Seems like he's coming to his senses. He insists on giving us enough to move that to the solved cases file. Which police surgeon have we got today? Morticia. Uh -huh. uh, our man's a bit poorly, according to our friends in the, uh, the prison service. Look at him, it's just a quick check-up. <laughs> I get used to people staring, if that's anything to go by. Go on, open it. <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Uh. <laughs> so, what's it say? Uh, it's hard to say because of the writing. Seeing as it was sent here, not the radio station, she is almost definitely going to be Daniel or Simon, thinking they're hilariously funny. So. What? No way! Doctors can hardly manage their own handwriting, let alone imitate someone else's. No, this is definitely from a woman. We need to get used to this. You're a proper celeb now, up for an award. Jimmy, you need to learn to embrace your popularity. Let yourself be... Just send Mrs Swanson through when she gets here, OK? What? <laughs> Looks like your reputation precedes you. All right, so what's your problem? Half of you lot weren't even born last time I was out. Oh, oh you okay? Sergeant Hollins, okay, my room, quick as possible. <coughs> okay, you lot, show's over. <coughs> Breathe in. <coughs> Your prison doctor diagnosed heart failure due to mitral valve disease. <coughs> yeah. Last year, sometime. <coughs> well, I'm going to recommend he takes another look on your return. Oh, he got it wrong, did he? I don't think so. If anything, the deterioration is much more advanced. <coughs> Didn't clear up by itself, then. <laughs> Mr Cotham, this is very serious. What do you know about serious, eh? Easy. <coughs> it's my understanding you asked to be here today. <coughs> If you continue to get yourself worked up, I'm going to recommend we stop this right now and you be returned to prison immediately. You're exhibiting signs of acute stress, which could easily aggravate your condition. Uh, I'm sorry. OK? I've been waiting a long time for today. What do you mean? So, all OK? Ready to go? I'd like a word with you outside, please. Doctor's concerned about you. I'm concerned about you. So why don't you save us all this palaver and just tell us where the gun is? 
D.I. Wood has a point. I I'm going to show you. <coughs> you couldn't just give us directions then, eh? Sit here with the doctor, mind you, while we'll go and dig for it. We'll get you a solicitor in too. You know, it doesn't escape my notice that the address you've given us is that of your associate, Dickie Weld, recently deceased. Is that a fact? Sorry, former alleged associate. We never managed to pin anything on non-stick Dick. <coughs> Close, several times, but never quite went the distance. Oh, f funny that, isn't it? <coughs> of course, he got quite a bit of goodwill for helping put you away, didn't he? Very helpful in court, as I seem to remember. Telling the jury how he'd heard you state that you were going to kill Graham Marks on a number of occasions. Oh, you'll have to ask him about that. <coughs> a bit late for that now, isn't it? Which is odd for you. Because according to the file, you usually do things in the nick of time. It was your mate Marks who was murdered the night before he was due to come in and testify that it was you who shot Sharon Bowles, a cashier, during a raid on a building society in Dudley. A crime that, to this day, remains unsolved, <coughs> thanks to Mr. Marx's sudden demise. Oh, come on, Cotham, just tell us. Save us all the rigmarole of going there. The doc doesn't want your day out spoilt. A day out? If this is your idea of a day out, you've been staying in too long. <coughs> and that's coming from somebody that's been behind bars for 24 years. <coughs> Okay. Have it your own way. You ready, Doc? Everything <coughs> <sighs> okay? Yeah, fine. I was, uh, I was just hoping to get Lily's input on improving the layout of this place, which is at the police station all day. I will help. She's got a really good eye for this sort of thing. Oh, I'm sorry, am I missing something? If you need more consulting space, why don't you turn your office into another treatment room? Well, no, Julia spent ages designing that office. Well, she can redesign it. Either that or turn this place into a TARDIS. <sighs> don't worry about her. She ignored herself today. Same. <coughs> but it's different. Well, maybe you should have thought about that before you started pointing guns at people for a living. Do you really think this is helping? It's all right. Just a bit of banter. Uncuff him. I'm only practically keeled over just walking down the corridor at the Nick. I hardly think he's a flight risk. Come on. Let's get going. What do you want? I'm D.I. Wood from Leatherbridge Police Station. I have a warrant to search these premises. What? It's been a mistake. This was the residence of Richard George Weld? He's barely in the ground and you lot come sniffing round. You wouldn't know respect if it bit you on the backside. Charming. You lot never give up, do you? All his life you tried to pin something on him and you still haven't stopped. Now he's gone. No. No way. Coming here is bad enough, but bringing the likes of him. If you'd rather vacate the premises while we search it, we can make the necessary arrangements. Huh. And let filth like that wander around, no chance. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, fine, fine. In that case, why don't you tell us where to find what we're looking for? He's not touching anything of mine. That's not in your warrant, is it? What is it you're looking for? Evidence connected to a major <coughs> crime. So come on, then. Tell us where it is, or let's get you back, OK? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, in, in the middle of the lawn there. Oh, 
Come on, old son, the game's getting boring now. I don't understand. I could have sworn it was there. It's, uh, try nearer the wall. <coughs> I'm not lying, I'm just old. Yeah, putting pressure on him's gonna work. <coughs> Agree to make a statement and we can all go home. This is outrageous. It's bad enough you allowing a convicted murderer into my house, but to let him do that to my garden, it's disgusting. Well, I assure you... Oh, save it. I don't want anything from you, from any of you. Barbara, please. No, that's it. I've had enough. I want him out of here. Now, let me explain, please. <coughs> Mr Cotham. OK, let's just breathe. Breathe. <coughs> let's relax. Relax. Good. What are you doing? Our space is at a premium. I think this space could be used for more than storing pens and papers. What, well, you're expecting us to see patients in there? Really? No. I am moving in here. My office is going to become a consulting room. What, permanently? Mm -hmm. Well, as Zara pointed out, it's the obvious <laughs> solution. Mm. Oh, don't worry, I'll go. Are you sure you can fit in there? It looks a bit pokey. Well, as long as it alleviates the pressure on this place, I'll be fine. It's for Cherry. Lover boy, actually, CO'd to you. Oh, yeah. When he's away, he needs somewhere to get stuff couriered to. And that'll be me. It's a funny shape for a wine bottle. Oh, no, if it's wine, it gets delivered. Very funny. <sighs> that should reduce the liquid on your lungs. Ease your breathing a bit. <coughs> oh, I don't know what came over me. <coughs> I'm beginning to think you do. Oh. <laughs> What? Oh, come on, Mr Cotham. You can lead the police up the garden path, but don't try the same thing with me. <coughs> Either your condition has suddenly got a whole lot worse, or you've been hiding your symptoms from the prison doctors. Oh, dear. What are you going to do? Have me thrown in jail? <laughs> Why would you lie about something so serious? You're dangerously ill. Oh, it was always on the cards I was going to die in jail. They're not going to let me out without me fessing up and showing remorse. <coughs> is that what this is about? You coming clean? Setting your house in order? <laughs> I thought the cops were in there. <coughs> Look, as soon as I give you the all clear, those cops are going to send you straight back to Moorside. Unless you tell them what they want to know. Oh, I see. It's good cop, bad cop. Both working together for the same end, is it? <coughs> no, my only concern is keeping you healthy. Or as healthy as possible. <coughs> but you have a reason for coming here. Something you've been thinking about for a very long time. And you may not get a chance to do it again. Well, what if it's out of my hands? Well, how can that be? You either know where the gun is or you don't. But has this got something to do with Barbara? Is she the reason why we're here? Okay, whatever it is, I can't drag it out much longer. The police won't stand for it. And frankly, neither will your heart. <coughs> All right. Get him in here. <coughs> Do I would? I'll do you a deal. A deal? You're joking. We've done it, I bet. It's you that hasn't delivered. What would you want in return? Hang on a sec. Tell Mrs. World the date and the precise time that Graham Marks was shot. <coughs> and that gets us the gun. No more messing about. No, no. <sighs> All right, I need to wash my hands. I don't know just what is going on here, but if we don't get that gun sharpish, your little away day is over instantly. Do you understand? <coughs> I don't understand any of this. I'm just a mess. I don't even want to be in the same room as him. Do you understand? Just listen to what D.I. Wood has to say, please. Mrs. Weld, I've been instructed to inform you that Graham <coughs> George Marks was shot dead in his flat in Beringer Road in Leatherbridge on the 20th of April 1982. How can I forget? At 9.25 p.m. You've got that wrong for starters. No. Neighbours on both sides reported hearing shots at exactly the same moment. <coughs> they were watching Bergerac, apparently. 
That's not right. It happened later, much later. Dickie said so. That's not what's in the file, or what was said in court. It can't be. If it happened then, then... <coughs> Barbara, um, do you want to tell me what's going on here? <coughs> the pond. The left-hand side. What? The gun. You played your part and I... <coughs> Hey. <coughs> yes. Yeah, I am now. <sighs> Hi, Daniel. No, no, of course I haven't forgotten your uh, your presentation tomorrow. What? All right. Yeah. Everything's fine. No, I'm just uh, moving offices. What's this really about? You didn't need to come here to do this. You knew all along. Oh, you'd be surprised. 24 years can do a lot of damage. Can even change the way you think. <laughs> Well, if you were starting to feel remorse, why didn't you just confess? Why come here? Oh. <coughs> Fair play to you. It's the right calibre. Ballistics will tell us if it was used in the shooting. Oh, yes, it was. I didn't uh, bring you here to mess you about. Life's too short. <coughs> well, so uh, let's get back to the station. You can say your piece and we can put this to bed. Yeah, before we do, I want to see Mrs. World. <laughs> no way. Oh, now, come on, please. No. <laughs> You've had me. The doctor, the officers outside, at your beck and call all day. <coughs> now, we've got what we came for, let's go. Oh, well, it'll only take a minute. I mean, if you don't, I won't make a statement. Doesn't matter. <coughs> You've given us the gun. You knew where it was hidden. Plus, if there's DNA on it, we can do this without you. Don't you think you're being unnecessarily harsh? We came here to clear up a case, not give an old con a day out. Have you seen the state he's in? He's never going to make it to court, not even to plead guilty. If he's lucky, he's got six months. So? I'm not working for him. My job is to solve crimes, not monitor the welfare of criminals. And didn't he help you solve one today? Don't know, yeah. Depends on forensics. And whatever he puts in his statement, should he consent to making one? All he wants is a chance to talk. <laughs> he's playing you like a violin. Trust me, I've seen it a million times. No, to me, he seems sincere, and there's definitely something going on between him and Barbara. Doctor! Where is he? For pity's sake, Foster. How did I tell you? Just let them in. What are you trying to achieve? I've got to, I've got to have a talk to you. Talk? You can barely breathe. You heard what that copper said, didn't you? <laughs> Haven't you got anything to say, say to me? Other than that you're an idiot. Oh, no. It's too late to change anything. No, no, please don't. <sighs> Watch you die, I don't think so. What do you think you're playing at? Are you OK? Oh. Did he hurt you? Uh, no. By being a stupid, stubborn fool, maybe. What? It's all a lie. What is? The night Graham Marks was shot. 25th of April. That's my birthday, so I remember where I was. So... I was here. With him. Celebrating. We were... together. And he was here all the time? Till past closing time. Dickie had gone for a drink with the boys, so we knew we were safe till then. He was certainly here at half past nine, or whenever it was you said poor Graham got shot. Is this true? So how come if you had a supposedly cast-iron alibi, you never mentioned that at your trial? It was because of me, wasn't it? Because of some stupid, chivalric idea you got stuck in that head of yours. You know what Dickie thought about you? And what he would have done if he'd have found out about us? I was going down for the robberies anyway, so I wouldn't have been able to stop him. Oh, John, what have you done? Bye-bye. 
parcel for you. Oh, really? Okay. Dickie. Dickie had a very bad temper. And the thought of me being inside when he found out what happened between me and Barbara, well... So you waited until he was dead to come clean? Your jacket was found at the scene and well testified that you wanted Marks dead. I don't know about that. All I know is I was here and Dickie was very, very thorough. Why didn't you say something before? But when? When you never contacted me? Because I thought you'd killed Graham. I thought you'd left my bed and shot someone we both knew. I hated you for it. But you knew me. I mean, how can you think I'd do a thing like that? Everybody said you did. Dickie swore blind you did. Oh, there you go again. But to stay in prison for 24 years... Or confess to something I'd never done. All I could hope was that uh, Barbara would know that I hadn't done it. Well, obviously, I, I, I was wrong. So who did kill Marks, then? And what about the cashier? That wasn't me, either. Then who? Look, uh, I, I've done what uh, I came here to do. Anything else, well, what, what, what's the point? I've always loved you, girl. And for what it's worth, I still do. <laughs> what can I do with that? You come here after all this time and tear off my life down and then say that? You stupid, stupid old man! Bob! Bob, come back! <laughs> I want to go home now. Back to prison. It's all right, you've got plenty on your plate. No, 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 what is it? Well, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for everything that you've done for me. Oh. I've been feeling so much better in myself lately. Well, that's fantastic. But you've done all the hard work, you know. Yeah, well, there's no way that I could have done that without your support. But don't worry, because you're not going to have to put up with me for very much longer. I've decided that it's time to make the next step. I feel ready. Henry thinks it's a good idea. Uh, it's not going to be easy, of course, but... Um, th th the next step? To be more independent. I've been a right burden on you, Julia. It's not fair. And it's not good for me, either. I want to move out. I want to get a place on my own. Right? <laughs> it seems to make even more sense now you're stuck in here. After working in a cupboard all day, you're going to want a bit more space when you get home, not have me cluttering the place up. So. <laughs> Sure, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, cool. I mean, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. It's, oh, it's <laughs> meant so much to me. <laughs> OK. <coughs> Come on, Cotham, just tell us if it was Weld. Inspector. I didn't say it was. Makes no odds now. Sounds like he was just the kind of scumbag we suspected him to be. I'm no grass and all this stuff's a long way back, but one thing I've learnt, let the past lie. No good's gonna come out of it. Are you sure about that? <laughs> well, I think we've probably got enough now. And if there's DNA on the gun... Well, it won't be mine. So whose is it? Because people out there need to know and you'd feel a lot better. Yeah. Any yeah. more pressure will be counterproductive. Seriously, quit while you're ahead. Thank you for everything. It's cruel out to turn out like this, but... Don't, don't. Will they let you out now? I've got no idea. I 
come and visit you then, if you'll let me. Yeah, I'd like that. Sort yourself out, bruv. Scott, what's the problem? I've just got things to sort out, all right? So they know he's a violent, unstable thug, but they lock him up all day in a house with a vulnerable girl. That makes sense. Yep. You must know. I'm trying to get access to see my daughter. And that takes money. Coming next this afternoon here on BBC One Scotland, Murder, She Wrote.